Once again, hello YouTube, this is Zach, and if you have been tracking along in this video series, we have covered quite a bit of stuff. Um, I highly doubt anyone is actually tracking along, um, but it just makes me feel good to, to think about that possibility. Anywho, we have covered octaves, the chromatic scale, whole steps, half steps, the major scale, intervals, triads, and seventh chords. Today we're going to talk about those uh, chords and those triads and chords that naturally occur within a major scale. I'm sure there's like a better like technical way to refer to what I'm about to teach you, but I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to teach it to you. And that's that. As always, I'm going to have practice exercise stuff in the description box below um, so that you can master the material. So let's start with a C major scale. What is a C major scale? Well, you start at C and go up whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. What is that? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. But of course, we know all this already. Like, I am insulting your intelligence by even explaining this, because of course you know what that is. Anywho, we are going to take triads from the C major scale. What do I mean? Well, we're going to start on the first note. What is the first note? C. We're going to start on that note, and we're going to go up in thirds. So we're going to go up a third from C, and then up a third from that note, whatever that note is. And then that is going to give us a triad. So you start at C, count up three. C, D, E. That's one, two, three. C, D, E. So you have C, and you have E. And then you're going to go from E, and you're going to go up a third. So you're going to go up E, F, G. One, two, three. That's another third. So we have C, and we have E, and we have G. We have the first, and the third, and the fifth note of the scale. That should probably sound a bit familiar, actually. Um, actually, but they're different things. Don't think about that. I didn't say that. Pretend I didn't say that. So, <clears throat> so we have C, and we have E, and we have G. What does that produce? That produces a C major chord. Why? Well, once again, I'm going to insult your intelligence and explain it. We have a root note, and that's the C, and then we have a third, which is the E in the middle, and we have a perfect fifth up top, that's the G, but the third in the middle is a major third, not a minor third. So we know that this is a major chord, or you can think about it as being a minor third on top of a major third. However you want to think about it, you can think about it. But uh, if you have no idea what I just did, you should probably go watch the last lesson. Just saying. So we started on the first note of the scale and we extracted a triad. So that triad that we extracted, that we took out of the C major scale, we can call that the one chord because we started on the first degree of the scale. So when we're using the C major scale, we can call a C major chord the one chord. Um, and you typically write that with a capital, um, uh, what is that called? Roman numeral one. I guess they're called capital or big or whatever the crap they're called. Um, so it looks like a big capital I is what it looks like typically. Um, capital because it's major, lowercase would mean that it's minor. You might remember that. Uh, and then it's one because it starts on the first degree of the scale. You all already know what a C major chord sounds like, but I'm going to go ahead and play one for you right now. Okay, we can repeat this process that I just did, starting not on the first degree of the scale, but on the second degree of the scale. So let's start on the second degree of the scale. What is that? That is D, because C was one and D was two, the second degree of the scale. We start on D. Go up a third, D, E, F. So we got F. Start on F, go up a third. We got F, G, A. So that gives us D, F, and A. The second, fourth, and sixth notes of the scale. That is the triad that you get when you start on the second note of the scale and, take, and go up in thirds and take out a triad. So D, F, A. What kind of chord is that? Well, of course, everyone on the planet knows that it is a D minor chord because you have a minor third on the bottom and a major third on top, or you can think about it as a minor third and a perfect fifth. However you want to think about it, this is a D minor chord. So we were in C major, we start on the second degree of the scale, we got out a D minor chord. So we're going to refer to this D minor chord as a two chord or a two minor chord. Um, it's typically written with a lowercase Roman numeral two. Um, some other people you might see, right, like a 2 and a lowercase m. That's not terribly common. That's a little, um, I don't know, that's not terribly formal. Um, the lowercase Roman numeral 2 is a little more common. And that, of course, you all know what it sounds like, but I'm just going to, once again, insult your intelligence and tell you what it sounds like. This is a D minor chord. This is a C major chord followed by a D minor chord.
So for my overachiever students, you would know that I just played the one major and the two minor um, that I got out of the key of C. That's pretty darn exciting if you ask me, or if you don't ask me, I don't care. Now, we're just going to keep doing, we're going to repeat this process. I'm going to do it a little faster for the next, uh, what is that, five chords that are left. So get ready. Here we go. You can start on E. That's the third degree of the scale. If you start on the third degree of the scale and you take out a triad, you're going to take out the third, the fifth, and the seventh degrees of the scale. What is that? E, G, and B. And what kind of chord is that? Everybody knows that is an E minor chord. So the third chord that we can get out of the C major scale is an E minor. That sounds like this. You can represent this E minor when you're using the C major scale, when you're playing in the key of C, with a lowercase 3. This is the 3 chord, or the 3 minor chord. You can do the same thing on the fourth degree of the scale. That would be F. So you're going to start on F. You're going to go up a third. You're going to get A. You're going to go up another third. You're going to get C. Yes, that is actually where we started because the scale has gone all the way around and it has started over. So we have four, six, and one. The fourth, sixth, and first degrees of the scale. You take those out, you get an F, A, C. What kind of chord is F, A, C? Well, everybody knows that it is an F major chord. Uh, so you can refer to this as the four chord or the four major chord with a capital uh, Roman numeral four. And that four chord sounds just like this. So a quick recap, we've taken uh, triads by starting on the first, second, third, and fourth notes of the C major scale. And it gave us C major, D minor, E minor, and F major. 1 major, 2 minor, 3 minor, 4 major. Keep that in mind. That sequence of chords sounds like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here we go. Okay, let's keep rolling. You can start on the 5th degree of the scale. If you start on the 5th degree of the scale, you'll get the 5, and then you'll get the 7, because you skip the 6. Go 5, 6, 7. That's a 3rd. And then you want to go up a 3rd from the 7. You're going to go 7, 1, 2. Because after 7 is 1. That's where the scale starts over. So if you start on the 5, you get 5, 7, 2. I hope everybody understood that. In the key of C, that's G, B, and D. And the notes G, D, and B are what kind of triad? They are a G major triad, which sounds just like this. And in the key of C, we're going to represent this with a big, fat, capital, uh, what is that? 5 um, Roman numeral. Okay, guys, two more. If you start on the sixth degree of the scale, you'll get the six, the one, and the three. Uh, that's A, C, and E. A, C, and E are what kind of triad? They are an A minor triad, um, which sounds like this. And you can represent that, of course, with the lowercase six, Roman numeral six. And then Finally, you can start on the seventh degree of the scale, which is essentially the last degree of the scale before it starts over. And if you take a triad from that, you get the seven, the two, and the four. This is the only one that's a little tricky. Um, in the key of C, that's going to be B, D, and F. What kind of triad is B, D, and F? It's actually neither major nor minor. It is a diminished triad. That's the only one that's not major or minor. Um, and a B diminished triad sounds like this. And you can represent this with a lowercase 7. You typically want to include something to say that it's diminished, so like a little degree sign or something uh, would probably probably be necessary. Okay, so to recap, we started on the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th notes of the scale, of the C major scale. That got us a C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminished. Um, got us those particular triads. If I play all of those in order, it sounds like this. Notice that when we land on the seven like that, play that last chord, and then it just ends, it sounds a bit incomplete, doesn't it? We'll talk about that in my next video. So that, those are all of the triads that you can get out of the C major scale. If you change the scale, you will get totally different chords.
I'm not going to walk through the entire thing again because that would be super redundant. But for example, if you were to say to take the E major scale, the E major scale is E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. If you were to take all the triads that you get from starting on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh degrees of the E major scale, you would get E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, A major, B major, C sharp minor, D sharp diminished. Um, so every scale, every major scale, has these seven chords that you can take out of it, these seven triads that you can take out of it. But the fun does not end there because you can keep going and you can take out not just triads but seventh chords. So every scale also has seven seventh chords that just naturally occur inside of it. We're going to stick with our C major example and we're going to add sevenths to all of those chords. So we started on a C and we took the triad that starts on the first degree of the scale. That's a C, an E, and a G. That's a C major chord. What if we wanted to add another third to the top. What if we wanted to add a seventh to it? That's going to be a third up from G, G, A, B. That's going to be a B. So we are going to add a B to that chord. What do we get? C, E, G, and B. What chord is that? That is the C major seventh chord. We can do the same thing with D. We already had D, F, and A. That was our two chord. On top of that A, we can add the seventh. What is the seventh? The seventh is going to be C. Uh, so that gives us D, F, A, and C. What kind of seventh chord is that? That is a D minor seventh chord. And you can just keep going, and that's what I'm going to do right now. And like I said, this might be uh, like drinking from a fire hydrant, in a sense. Um, that's a wonderful phrase, if, if you've never used it. But uh, there's going to be practice stuff below, so you can get your practice on momentarily. If you start on the third degree of the scale, you already know that you're going to take the third, the fifth, and the seventh degrees of the scale. That's going to give you an E, a G, and a B. If you want to take the third that's on top of that B, that's going to give you a D. So you're going to have E, G, B, D. What kind of chord is that? That is the E minor seventh chord. You can start on the fourth degree of the scale. We already have F, A, and C, but if you want to take the seventh that naturally occurs in the chord, you're going to go up from the C a third, C, D, E. You have the E, F, A, C, E, face. What does that spell? I was about to say, what does that spell? What kind of chord um, is that? That is an F major seventh chord. So to recap, one through four, we had major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven. That's fairly simple. When you start on the fifth degree of the scale, you get the chord, G major, we already know that, G, B, and D. If you want to add the seventh, you would be adding an F, because you'd go up a third from the D, D, E, F. So you have G, B, D, and F. What kind of chord is that? That would be a dominant seventh chord. So the fifth degree of the scale, if you start there, you get a dominant seventh chord. Uh, so the chord, the triad is major, and the seventh is minor, if you know what I'm saying. If you want to start on the sixth degree of the scale, uh, that would be A. You're going to take the six, the one, and the three. We already know that gives you an A minor chord, A, C, E. If you want to take the seventh that's on top of that E, that would be a G. So you're going to have A, C, E, and G. What kind of chord is that? That is an A minor seventh. Everybody knows that, right? You can start on the, what, what is that? What is, what's left? Seven. You can start on the seventh degree of the scale. The triad is, a, what is that? A B diminished. Uh, so it's going to be B, D, and F. If you want to throw the seventh on top, you're going to take the note that is a third above that F that naturally, that naturally occurs in the scale. What is that? F, G, A. That's an A. So the seventh chord that you get when you start on the seventh degree of the scale is B, D, F, and A. What kind of chord do we get with those notes? Drum roll, please. That would be a B half diminished. So the triad is, uh, what is the triad? The triad is diminished and the seventh is minor. So it's a B half diminished. So to recap, when you start on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth notes of the C major scale, the seventh notes, I'm sorry, the seventh chords that you get are these. C major seven, D minor seven, E minor 7, F major 7, G dominant 7, A minor 7, B half diminished, B half diminished 7, however you want to say it. Um, and I will play those all back to back right, wait for it, now.
notice how woefully incomplete and unfinished that little sequence of chords sounded. Why? Well, we will talk about that next week, because each of those chords has a function, has a job, it does something, you dig? Okay, but for the moment, what do you need to know? You need to understand that within every major scale, there are seven triads just sitting there. They're just chilling. They just naturally occur within the major scale. And then you can extend all of those triads up to make seventh chords, and that would give you seven seventh chords that just naturally they're just they're just hanging out right there in the scale you don't have to change anything they're just there um so we are eventually going to use these different chords to write songs and do all sorts of stuff but we're going to do that next week i said i said next week i don't even know why i said that i don't make these once a week we're going to do that in our next video whenever that is this week next week the following week i don't know Um, But in the meantime, if you are benefiting from these videos, you should totally like and subscribe and turn on notifications and check me out on Instagram and Facebook and like me on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. Because like I've said before, these videos take a long time to make. And I would love to know if people are actually benefiting from them. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. You can write them in the comments. I should be able to answer. You can send me a private message on one of these social media accounts and I should be able to respond. Um, unless I get like a bazillion and then I won't be able to respond and I'm sorry, but I can't do that. Um, other than that, other than that, I got anything. I got nothing. So I will see you guys next time. And until then, thank you for watching.